one moment you're ignorant and the next moment you sort of get that little tiny, tiny clue that sort of sheds an enormous amount of light on the whole thing. That's a sort of mysterious thing about science. It's sort of different from engineering. I mean, you know, you've been able to build a bridge over a river uh, for thousands of years. The basic principles are understood. But in science, you know, you're never quite sure where you are, actually, most, most of the time. And, I, you know, you've got to enjoy swimming in the sea of unknowingness. Otherwise, what's the point? There's a famous quote from a physicist named Leon Letterman which says that those who never stop asking silly questions grow up to be scientists. And Tim, to me, is the exemplar of that sort of person because there is nothing that Tim doesn't want to know the answer to. One of the things he thinks about is why the sky is blue and, um, and questions like that. And uh, what I think we're seeing is a very curious mind, the sort of mind that a child has which always asks questions. And most people lose that curiosity, but um, Tim has it in spades. I, I like to tell the story of um, having learned that I'm a Nobel laureate. Of My daughter, who was then seven, Celia, um, saying, Daddy, why is the ceiling opaque? And I looked up at the ceiling, well, you know, um, light doesn't get through the ceiling. And then, but then I looked out of our window, and I thought, oh, goodness, how does light get through the window? And I realized that we'd done all this other measuring refractive indices in, in, for A-level, but nobody had ever told us why light gets through the glass but doesn't get through the wall. And this seems like a really sort of rather fundamental thing. So I then started asking people, you know, how does it work, how does it work, how does it work? And physicists' friends and biologists' friends and absolutely everybody I ran into, you know, why does light get through glass? And, and people, I mean, it was so interesting. So different people use different approaches. This is a good example of how a biologist thinks about things. So uh, when I sort of, I knew that glass was a frozen liquid. Uh, so I thought, well, what other liquids? You know, maybe it's because it's a liquid that, that light gets. And then I suddenly realized that mercury was a liquid and light is reflected off mercury. It doesn't go through mercury at all. So that, that hypothesis was out the window. Um, and then I thought about carbon, and carbon comes in the blackest black that absorbs light better than absolutely anything on Earth, but also in diamond, which is the sort of sparkliest, most translucent stuff you could possibly imagine. And, and that then tells you that it's to do with the, uh, the electrons, how the electronic configurations of the actual material. And then you realize that it's to do with the theories of how photons interact with electrons, and then you know you're lost.